squad. What you're about to see is a real-life story. Taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game. The carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Braddock. Captain Braddock. Ready. This case, his brother's keeper, shows you the shocking facts behind a hideous conspiracy that exploits man's compassion for his fellow man, generating a reign of terror while hiding behind a mask of brotherly love. Well, Captain Braddock, what gives us the pleasure of your presence in this most unfashionable neighborhood? Are you still looking for the right horse, or could it be that you're finally studying the help wanted section? A job, Captain, a job. That's what I really need. I've just realized that in this materialistic age, man has forsaken his less fortunate brother and refuses to give him a helping hand. Yeah, that's right, Longshot. You've got to roll up your sleeves and help yourself. Exactly. But how does one go about seeking employment for your empty stomach, you know, and no, uh, uh, no car fare? And... Oh, okay. But this is the last time. You know, you go get yourself that job. Well, I'm on my way. I, I, this is real white of you, Captain. Forget it, Longshot. But don't you disappoint me. Your pardon, sir, but could you help a poor old man out? I have offer of employment and I have no car fare to get there. Okay, Sonny, come along. Where do you think you're going? Get in! Take off them shoes. You decided to join us, so you better cooperate. We work together here. You're one of us now, and we take care of you. You turn in your dough, and we'll fix you up with room and board. Come on, don't act dumb. I know they learn you deaf guys how to read lips. Take them off. I ain't got them all night. I guess this is the only language you guys savvy. <laughs> I guess you get the idea. Holding out on me, huh? You'll learn. Put them on. Go on over and get yourself some grub. Food.
That's all right. You can talk to me. I can read lips. Just talk softly. Sarko's got good ears. Don't worry, so have I. By the way, what's your name? Jerry. Mine's Longshot. And sometimes they do come in. Don't stand there, Stock. Sit down, relax. Thank yourself for the home. Thank you, Mr. Stoker. Don't let me disturb you. Not at all. You know, it's wonderful we can still get a steak like this. Look at the people starving all over the world. It's a shame. Sure is, Mr. Stoker. How was your take this week? Business bad all over. You make me unhappy, Sarko. Your receipts have been falling off for weeks now. I hate being unhappy. It's depressing. That's a bad district, boss. People ain't got no money down there. And besides, with them, charity begins at home. Now, your humor is worse than your balance sheet. There's nothing wrong with that territory. The last crew we had there did all right. Why can't you? Well, they had more men. I ain't got a full crew. And the overhead's too high, that's why. Don't bother me with details. Go out and get more men, and cut the overhead. Well, they got to eat something. We're running a business, not a restaurant. I picked up one guy today, kind of by accident. But that don't happen often. It's up to you to make it happen. Try the homes, the schools, the welfare. Promise them a job with room and board. Play Santa Claus, you know the routine. But be careful you don't get caught by some snoopy official or crying relative. Right, boss. Longshot thought he could beat the racket at its own game. But he didn't know he was playing with dynamite. Crazy old fool. Let's see your pockets. Oh, well, I wish you could hear what I'd like to tell you. Beat it. <laughs> Next. I've got some news for you, kid. Wait till Bozo gets out of here. Okay, get your grub. work on a ranch riding herd on two or three thousand head of cattle. Live in a great big rambling ranch house. Eat steaks every day. Own your own horse like a regular cowboy. How does that sound to you? Gosh, long shot, like a dream. Are there such places? Certainly. This one's up north. Belongs to a friend of mine. Just struck it, Rich. I just got word. Gee, gee long shot, I, I never been on a horse. Oh, now, isn't that awful? Don't you worry, kid. I'll, I'll make a rodeo champ of you yet. When are we leaving? How will we get there? How are we going to get away from here? Hold it, hold it, kid. Hold it one thing at a time. In a couple of weeks, I'll have enough money stashed away on the outside to take us up north in style. No riding the rods for us. <laughs> and as for clearing out of this bistro, well, I doubt that we, we, we will give Sako a farewell party. <laughs> What's the matter? Anything wrong? I don't know, Longshot. I feel kind of dizzy for a minute. Oh, too much excitement. Oh, well, it hasn't even started yet. <laughs> That's right. Come on, come on. Come on, I'm going to lie down. Get him to bed. some water. Yeah. I'm sorry, Longshot. Don't be silly. Better get a doctor. 
You take care of him, I'll get one. Sacco locked up already. So what? I'll make him unlock it. Oh, please, look. don't get in trouble, cousin me. I'll, I'll be all right. You better be all right by 7 in the morning. We got no room here for sick people. We'll kick you out back to society and have none of you. That's what you think. Oh, he can talk now. And getting fresh, too. After all we've done for you. Giving you a job, housing you, and feeding you. Boy, you know, good friend, don't you give me any trouble. I'm going to finish my dinner. <laughs> and now, let's see how this case develops. You never make a housewife, Jerry. You never know till you try. How do you feel, kid? I don't know, long shot. I, I seem to get worse instead of better. Got to get you out of here. I couldn't do a thing on the outside today. Sako's watching me like a hawk. Oh, please be careful, long shot. He's full of tricks. The closet's only one of them. I have a few tricks up my sleeve myself. One of them wears a captain's badge. I've got to make a call. What are you two up to? Captain, for showing up. You're a great guy. I had a rough time getting through to you. Why, what's the matter, Longshot? Last time I saw you, you were going to get a job. Now, you didn't get into trouble again, did you? Oh, I certainly did, Captain. I got a job, all right. But oh, what I've walked into. What's the matter? Are they working you too hard? Captain, I've never taken such beatings in my life. No, no, not, I don't mind for myself. It's the kid I'm worried about. Wait a minute, Longshot. One thing at a time. Where are you working and what kid are you talking about? How many suckers do you think you fall for this every day? Quite a few, I'm sure. Well, suppose a gang of men, 25 or 50, maybe 100, were forced to pull this gag. What do you think the daily rake-off would be? So you're in with a bunch of hoodlums, huh? Oh, I'm in with them, all right. I'm in with a guy named Sacco. Socks plenty. Know him? I've made his acquaintance. You know, I should take you in right now as a vagrant, a fraud, soliciting money under false pretenses. Now, you should know better than to get mixed up with racketeers. But maybe for once, some good can come out of a man's mistakes. Please, Captain, do anything you want, but you, you've got to help me. I was about to ask you the same thing. Anything you say. You've always treated me right. But the kid comes first. He needs me. He depends on me. That's the first time it ever happened to me in my life. Maybe that's why I'm a bum. I can't let him down. Let me ask you something. 
Would you be willing to testify in court about your experiences within this gang, no matter what happened to you? Yes, sir, I would. Then I think we can help each other. We've been trying to get this gang for quite a while, but we're short on evidence and witnesses. You know why? Nobody wants to be a dead witness. Yeah. Captain has everything under control. But what if Sarko finds out, then what? Worried people don't get well. Stop worrying. Hey, well, whatever made you adopt me? Who knows, kid? Maybe it was the other way around. It's funny. You know, I, I never thought I could make friends with anybody. Why, you've got lots of friends, like me. I worry about you, see? I'm sorry I got sick, Sarko, but I'm feeling much better. And I'll be able to make my rounds in no time. Take it easy, take it easy. You stay right here and get well. If you feel that way about him, why don't you get him a doctor and something decent to eat? I will, I will. I'm waiting for an okay from the boss. I put in a special request. Sarko ain't such a bad guy after all, is he? Gee, thanks, Sarko. That's nice of you. Think nothing of it. Take good care of him, will you? He's really all right, isn't he? I wouldn't trust him from here to the door. He's up to something. Think so? I know so, and we're going to find out. Here he comes. Cup of tea will pep you up. Mind if I join a party? Nothing like I got a cup of tea to give you a lift. You're the boss. Oh, cut it out, will you? I'm one of you guys, see? This place could stand a little fixing up. I'll tell the boss about that, too. How many times must I tell you to make your own decisions? I know, boss, but this is something special. How special can it be for you to bother me at this hour? It's an emergency, boss. I'm telling you about this. Stop wasting time. What is it? It's about the guy I picked up, the guy I told you about. Yes, yes, come on, come on. And then uh, Jerry, he gets sick, and then the guy, the one I told you I picked up, I mean, he starts acting funny. <sighs> come on, will you please make sense? Now, who's sick? Who's acting funny? And who cares, anyway? Oh, sure, boss. Uh, I don't care. Oh, you don't? Then what's the emergency? Oh, I, I mean I do, boss. Uh, I better start from the beginning. Don't, don't. Just try to remember what you came here for. Yeah, it's about a guy who's deaf. Uh, who ain't deaf. At least, I think. What did you say? It's Longshot. I think he's a faker. Are you sure? I got a pretty good hunch. Who is he? Where'd he come from? Well... The guy I picked up, the one I was telling you about. You fool, how do you know he's not a stoolie? Why that no... Shut up! Yes, sir. It's a million dollar business, built up by genius, and now jeopardized by an asinine lame brain like you. Now listen, get rid of him! Yes, sir. I just want to make sure you're feeling better. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. I'm your pal, remember? Oh, pardon me. I forgot. You got another pal. <laughs> Let's see if he'll help you out now. Oh, no, please, please don't. Oh, so you can hear all right, huh? Well, that's all I wanted to know. You heard too much. You said it, brother. I'll kill you for that. <laughs> Come on, get going. <laughs> I'll kill you. Don't miss. <laughs> Why, you say a prayer. 
Now look at your jailer. Now look at him. Are you afraid of him now? You'll never get away with it. I'll get you, all of you. Oh, you will, eh? If you'll back me up in court, if you'll go to court with me, decent jobs for all of you. <laughs> Here. What a speech. Keep an eye on him. I've got a call to make. I'll tell you what. I'll make you a deal. I'll give you back your money every lousy dime. I will speak to Captain Braddock. I'll give you a bonus. But he, he must be there. It's an emergency. Uh -oh. A bonus, you hear me? Tell him to, tell him to call a long shot. Yeah. Get in the corner, all of you. He'll know. Now stay there. Grab him. Grab him. Oh. Grab him. Grab him. Stand back. Drop it, Sacco. Sorry we're late, but we had to pick up your boss first. All right, take him out. One of you men send an ambulance right away. Well, how you doing, you... you old bum? You did a great job while you were playing possum. We got the rest of them. That's good. Was checking out, Captain. Pull a fast, fast one, are you? Never did finish what I started. The boys will they'll carry on. Longshot did not die in vain. His cowardly murder received the maximum penalty. Harry Stoker and his shady associates are now serving a long stretch in prison. It's one thing to be charitable and another to be careless. There are jobs for the handicapped. Some of them created with your donations. Give and give freely, but make sure your dollar is used for those for whom it was intended so that they may benefit by your generosity. Don't fall for rackets that hide behind the cloak of brotherly love. Check the credentials before you check your heart, for it could happen to you. I'm closing this case now, or rather the courts will, but there'll be others, because that's the way the world is built. Remember, there are people who can slap you on the back with one hand, and pick your pocket with the other. And it could happen to you. See Racket Squad next week, same time, same station.